Mirage map number two, the pick of 9Z. You are playing without try and with their new man, Wasso Peak. It's Boggs and Pineapple Phillips on the mic with you this evening and, oh, I guess technically afternoon for most of us here in the U.S. and in South America. I believe it is evening, so afternoon, evening, and maybe even night. Nithon, though, for Red Canids with a nice little one tap to start things off on the Buddha getting the crossover. Bomb has made its way to sight and down to the ground, but 9Z now to hold up against five members of the Red Canids. There is a kit for Barton as well. Max on the flank could do a lot, and he's already gotten two. DGT eliminating hard. Zao will make it even more impossible for Red Canids. Venom's at a 1v4. Make it no more. 9Z, the pistol round on T's side, and a good start to their map pick. Very solid start. I was a bit worried with the opening pick going the way of Nithon, and yet everything else turned up 9Z. Again, their backs are against the wall, 9Z. They lost the first map, 10-13. They can't put their foot down and send this to Nuke. It will be over, and they will be in the lower bracket. The pressure is definitely on for the number one seed. Red Canids, though, going for an investment in round number two. It's going to be a scout, some deagles, and a 5-7. Kevlar. This is a very scary buy in the right situation. I'll have to see how 9Z counteract it. 9Z not trifling with SMGs either, going straight for rifles, the Lils and AKs. A little bit light on utility, but they're banking on the rifles, giving them a severe advantage in the duels. Scout from Nithon can do some tagging. The Deagles can do some bagging or vice versa, although Hardzow is flashed away in ladder. He will hold and hope they push him. Take care from a backstab. He's spotted by Max. Down he falls. More to come from Max as well. He spots at the last two on the B site. Destiny does chime in and help out Barton and Nithon in taking down the very same Max. Nithon doesn't even get a scout shot off. Barton does land one more 1D. He has a lot more work to do. Oh, baby. Now we're talking. Barton's cooking with some gas, but Buddha puts out the fire. Venom's had a last one alive with those armor deagle buys. And Prince Stream is going to have to print a pretty picture for him. Missing the deagle shots. Not connecting it. Buddha with a three piece. 9Z. Narrow escape from defeat will claim victory in round two. They will. They don't recover a second AK, it's the Galil on Buddha for under the following. It will be dropped around. Max on a Mac 10. This should be an easy round for them. They know Red Canids went for the investment. They know it'll be a save now. Destiny, though, throwing in a Deagle and Venom Zera, a P250, to try and find something. This weapon's far more potent than the USPs. EGE middle taking point. AK in hand doesn't spot anything. is setting up a, a potential play towards middle three on catwalk one top con and one on a venom zera in ninja will get cleared the mac 10 finds the opener now looking for more spots them all on the catwalk buddha finds one and he and max a pair as well the usp for barton though the last alive does net a pair of kills double think on the buddha and that is at least some damage done in the save round some damage, and it does keep the economy of 9Z somewhat honest, but they still have a good amount of money. Buddha will remain on the Galil. Max will retain the Mac 10. TGE going for the Kalashnikov, and Red Canids have Nithon on the op very early here this time. Let's see if he can get going with that. was something he was not able to really get working for him back on 8 on Anubis. Let's see if he can get kicking off here. Well, he's going to be watching in from jungle to palace. Or watching ramp now from back bench. Venom Zera has a lot of work to do here. He does down the first, goes for more, picks up two. DGT able to get out of dodge with a bomb. But that's a two for one trade that Red Canid will be very happy with. Him. Max, however, opens up the B side. Barton not expecting somebody out that far. Max catches some timing. Also, peak. 
We'll pick up Destiny creeping an underpass. Down to the underworld he goes, and Red Kadids might be saving here. Might be forced to. Looks like they're still pressuring forward. There's no bomb plant, so they have time to rotate. Alright, Zach's gonna try to stop that bomb from hitting dirt, but Hwaso Peak makes the crossing. Stop the knife on. Again, an unwieldy weapon, but it can get the job done. But hard Zhao gone. The task becomes all the more difficult, all the more cumbersome. That should send him saving. It does. He's gonna walk away. Nine Z don't seem too keen on hunting either. They're content with their fourth round. Very solid start for 9Z on the start on the beginning of their own map pick. The fact they're doing this kind of damage on the T side is a very good sign for 9Z if they want to push this one to map three. Red Canids unable to get anything going here on the CT side so far. However, both teams do tend to trend towards that more equilibrium, although for 9Z, a much stronger CT side than their T side, almost a 70% win rate on their defense. They still like this map quite a bit as far as their record shows. They don't play it all that often, but when they do, they have relative success on it. And Red Canids might have been caught a little flat-footed after a very close but successful map victory on Ancient on Anubis. Why do I keep wanting to call it Ancient? Probably because we've seen nothing but Ancient CS2 matches over the last like three weeks. Yeah, we've seen Ancient way too many times. I also want to highlight top two stars right now for 9Z are Buddha and Max, the two that were silent on map one. In fact, Max has already tied up his kill count from map one. That's not too shabby. Not at all. DGT taking point out towards B, catches Barton looking. The op of Nithon is still here. It is towards Cat, but 9Z have not committed to this B play as of yet. That's going to be a compromise investment in Hwaso Peak. Going for the peak on the Nithon. Drops the op. It's not recoverable either. Red Kid is. That was their only hope in this round, and it has been taken down without incident. The last three on pistols. One, five, seven, two deagles. They can do damage. We've seen them find quite... Uh, quite a fair few one deeds, but seems like too tall a task in this one. Might just save their Kevlar for the following. Oh, someone gives them a rifle. Five zero start for nine Z on the T side of Mirage is going to be a little bit hard to overcome, I think, for Red Canids. They have to find a way back into this one and fast. Arzal one deagle shot, not going to be allowed a chance for a second as TGE will spam him through the wood. Also, peek up close and personal, blocks down Destiny, and Venom Zeta will be sprayed by DGT. 5 0 start, no survivors, buy up again for Red Canids, Nithon back on the AWP. Again, though, it almost seems like a gesture in futility considering how well Nithon was performing with the rifle in hand versus the bolt action sniper. I'm concerned. Also, a timeout would not be a bad idea for Renkin in here. No. However, we have yet to see an actual timeout in this series. Other team seems too keen on taking one regardless of the situation. Op for Nithon. It's in towards window. It will Molly Buddha forward, but it's not going to act on that Molotov. It's going to fall back immediately. Still a five versus five with lots of utility being used by Red Canids in the early goings. Nade does a paltry six damage onto Max. So far, no other contact has been made. Smokes to both sides of the connector. Still a very slow round on 9Z. They walk out now. Venom's out of one on the A4. Molly out of position, but he's still able to fight somewhat. Gets a dink on a TGE, so that's not too bad. One and almost a second kill. Considering his low HP after that first engagement and the position he was stuck in. No bomb plant, no even bomb moving onto the site for 9Z. Time is starting to dwindle here pretty quickly. Without more responses in that first, TGE picked off. That's the bomb dropped as well. Red Canids, options brewing, but they're rotating off. They don't know the bomb dropped, Nate. And this opens up a whole world of possibilities for 9Z. For 9Z. It does. Destiny in con could still sow some chaos, but no, he's actually all the way down. 
They are totally making the wrong read completely. Players will walk in. Barton will finally check back towards A, and that will give up the ruse. But Nines East still have more than enough control at this stage to plant the bomb. They're both towards CT, though. Eight seconds left. Buddha has to protect his teammate. Bomb will hit dirt in the nick of time, and Buddha will challenge towards CT spawn. But red canids are still set up well to go for this retake, especially with the flank from Destiny. Also, Peak spots it, but timing. Timing's everything. He doesn't actually see the player. He goes back towards Tetris, and that might make this a round in Red Kid's favor. Two players towards CT. Destiny blindsides the first towards Red. Max now a lot to do. He can't find anything. It's Destiny coming up with all three. That whole hold relied on the reality that no one would be ramped. And Destiny found the perfect timing. Red Kid's on the board. A clean round as well with four surviving. It's now their turn to dig their way back into this one. It's a very deep hole they've found themselves in. But maybe they can find a way on out. It all starts with one. Just stacking on another. And another. And another. Op shot goes missing. Opened up quite a bit of view of the smoke, too, which is interesting to note. The, cl the close proximity of the op last. One for one trade out mid, though. Another one for one trade. It's hard to and max equalize each other out. DGT, however, establishes an advantage for 9Z. This is all a virtue of the presence. Burning is Barton, and he will not escape the flames. Barbecue Barton. And Venom's Air, the last one left. The bomb still top middle. Lots of time on the clock, and TGE holding for any potential cross from A towards mid. Timing will be everything, and it goes the way of Venom's Air. It doesn't take any damage from that either. Now, do 9Z opt for the retake? Yes, they do. Even though Venom Zeta has a very good idea, that is exactly where they're going to end up. He's made his way over. I believe he has an idea that DGT, or at least somebody, is here in market. A lot of the jump, but DGT is wise to the possibility. Good swing and good timing from DGT. Nets a six. 9Z isolate that single victory for Red Canids in the round before. And that might harm the CT economy as well. They'll have one more... Decent investment to Red Canids. If they can't win this one, it should be a 7th and, by extension, an 8th for 9Z. This now puts Red Canids in a bit of an awkward spot where they pretty much have to get the job done. There's one from Nithon on the off. The spray from Destiny yields two. He won G's after it. But it doesn't really matter. He's done his job. Three for the price of one. For Red Canids. And Destiny is really heating up on this map too. Getting kills in bunches is Destiny. And TGE with Max have to do it all alone. Max is definitely the guy you kind of want in this situation. But is TGE going to be up to snuff to join him? They're both sp so spread out too. One in Palace. One all the way back towards CT spawn. 9Z have found themselves in a bit of an awkward spot. But they are having enough time to regroup and... TG has to be careful not to go a little too early and spoil the fun. Give up the plan. 2-2 two, two setup for Red Canids. No matter where 9Z goes, they're going to have some defenders to dispatch TGE one for one. Venom's Air will not the second, though. Trade from Max is good. He'll get control of the set. He'll get the bomb plant down. That will give him a fighting chance in this one. Uh, 1v2 is a tall task. It's actually technically a one versus three with two remaining. Ardzao, Barton, just play this together, play as a unit. You don't have kits, you don't have utility, but you have the numbers. They'll both swing CT. Max is going to play into the same. He should be good on the but he finds the first. He spots the second, but he can't reset the spray. Ardzao, good trade. And again, Red Kids playing to their strength in that round and securing a second, a much needed second as well, if they wanted a way back into this hat. Yeah, it's so costly, though. They have no money to reinvest with in the next round. They try to go back for, I believe that was the op, and they don't get it. Now I thought we'll use a rifle, and the way things have been going since the trend on Anubis, he's going to get like three kills with the spray down, and then go immediately back to the op. Venom Zeta is going to rest on the MP9, Barton with a mag 7. That's an interesting choice. I do like that call, though. It's a very fun gun to use, and if he plays his position right, he can make it work well, especially over on B. 
Nithon holding in the window, smoked off, opens up a little gap. That is actually a very nifty little angle there. But Buddha's wise to it. He is just going to shut down Nithon. It is the double-edged sword of that position, that little spam. You're very exposed, and you're not going to be able to move out of there fast. No, you're not. Nine Z grouping up for a B play. Four players here, the fifth on catwalk. At mag seven, you mentioned it can be a menace on B, but it's going to have its work cut out for it. There's no support now as the other defender has rotated towards middle. TGE, does he clear this angle? Does he win the duel versus the mag? Walk forward. Some catwalk. They have to know it's a possibility. Barton. Getting antsy, getting worried, but he's gonna clear it. He doesn't clear it well, well enough. Max seven, one, two, three, not quite. Max finishes it for him. Barton, still alive, still kicking, does even more. He's finally taken down. Buddha catches the second, but this has been made a realistic possibility for Red Canids. Venom, Zera, and Destiny. And an even two versus two. Destiny on catwalk. Too aggressive, looks a little too far down the catwalk. He's caught. Leaves Venom Zera alone. MP9, some nades, no kit though. The MP9 is going to struggle. Hard to clear get right, doesn't spot anybody except surely with her. He'll drop in, does some damage, gets the first. And the bomb is not planted for Buddha. He'll throw the Molotov, he'll stick the deep. He's gonna be a full 10. Nade won't do enough. Can Venom Zera stick it all the way? No is the answer. No time either. The new 10 second timer making its ugly noise heard. Venom Zera will get away with the AK. 9Z will get away with the 7th. Get away with the 7th is a very good way to put that. That was so narrow. Red Canids were one kid away from pulling that back. Now, 9Z with 7 already on the T side are in a very good spot to secure this one and push themselves on to map number three, which is Nuke. And if the trend continues, I'm going to favor 9Z on Nuke because they look so good here on Mirage. The only weakness they, sh they showed was on Anubis, and that wasn't even really that weak of a map for them. 9Z just kind of got outclassed by a team that loves to play that map, and it was kind of more of a niche pick that worked out. While 9Z, very familiar on Nuke, destroying everything on Mirage. The aim is really coming online, too, for everybody. Buddha and Max, DGT, all performing well. Wasso Peak hasn't really had to do all that much. And double entries here for the side make it three as Destiny does not keep an eye on Khan. DGT with a backstab. And eighth is all but confirmed for 9Z. Barton does get one at the very least. The bomb's still out in middle. I don't think Barton's going to be able to do much. Uh, he does get a lot of damage onto DGT. Hard's out in CT, but he should surely be cleared. Or just plant the bomb outside triple. That also works. You see his feet, Hard's out. What? He's gotten two and three now. He's on low HP, but again, making something out of nothing. Redkinids finding a way back into it. Hard's out suddenly becomes quite scary towards CT spawn with the scout jumping around. He hoppity. Can't quite find anything with that smoke and Swasso Peak, one and two. It looked scary, what looked touch and go does again fall the way of 9Z. Slightly more sided that time around than the round prior, but still, Red Canid's doing well to at least make it contentious. Pistols out. 9Z with the rifles, of course, across the board. Hards out, dives into underpass, has a friend, Venom Zera. Do they have a kill? They're making all the noise. It'll be heard presumably by Max, who's walking into the stack, leading the charge. A little bit of damage, a lot of bit of damage, but Max does pick up a pair. TGE helps out with Nython. And DGT will drop Barton over on A. That's the last remaining player alive on the A side of things for Red Canids. For, yeah, for Red Canids. 9Z. Just back away. Bomb going the other direction. I think TG is just going to hang out here to make sure they can't get the AK. But this is a 10th. It is. I think maybe he's going to fight. There, Catwalk caught. That was one of those AKs. Last lives hard down apartments. He does get a dink, but I don't think he'll get a kill. He has the Glock out, TG, round. 
Player crosses that might be a kill. DGT dancing does secure it. Upgrades the Glock. Nine to two for nine Z. If I'm not mistaken, this is their weaker side as well on this map. It's weaker by a significant margin as well. A near 70% win rate for them on the T or the CT side, excuse me. That is dominance. Things looking very good for 9z on the second map. And at this point, I dare say they're already looking towards nuke and getting game plans ready in mind. Oh, 100%. Mirage is all but over. 10-2 uh, half would pretty much solidify that given 9z's statistical record on the CT side at almost 70%. This map is pretty much done and dusted. I see why 9z wanted to pick in a Mirage here. If anything... Mirage can be a great equalizer, but when a team knows it as familiarly as 9Z do, sometimes there's just no stopping it. And they look at home on the Puggers Paradise. I think we kind this... of neglected to mention, we talk about TG being the coach, but the beauty of having your coach as your stand is the fact that he's still intimately familiar with all of your defaults, all of your executes, and he can fill any role. And... It also helps the TGE is finding a fair few frags as in addition to that. So really 9Z are not hindered nearly as much as I thought they would be. He's yeah, he's been very competent. I thought he was good on Anubis. Hasn't had to do too much here on Mirage. Python does get a fair lineup for Max on one EGT. Messy spray, but now he's in a 1v2. This is technically winnable, but his health does not really make that so. No bomb in the open. He falls in the end. 9-3 as we hit the halftime break.
Dominant half for 9z. Capped off by a bit of a stumble, but they're still well poised to take their own map pick and send us off to nuke. Pineapple Phillips and Boggs on the mic. Red Canids on the T side. Is it Canid? Is it Canid? I don't know. I'm going to keep on flip-flopping between the two. Double dualies in play for Buddha. No kit for the CT side, but they are ready to rebuke this fast beat play. Dual Beretta's out for Buddha. Gets one. Hards out trades. DGT one tap. Gets stinked and dropped by Venom Zera. Bomb planted out for an absolute uh, hold, and there still is Destiny up on top of the high ground. Does take down Max, as a matter of fact, and DGT, or TGE, rather, and Fosso Peak are going to try and make their way back in. No reason to save here. Fosso needs to get the opening. He's spotted by Destiny, and Barton will pop out. Venom Zeta from Evox. And that is the fourth round for Red Canids, and a must-win round as well. If they want a chance to make a comeback happen, they needed that pistol round on the T side. Let's see if things are trending T side, as most things are really in CS2. Still a very long road back for the Red Canids. A clean victory here helps out, but it's the third round of the half, round number 15, that really does weigh heavily on the overall chances for Red Canids and success here on map two. Yes, it is. This round should be theirs. I also do want to highlight that Red Canids have been a T-sided team on this map in the last three months. 57% win rate on this T-side. Compared to only 53 on their CT side. Confidently aggressive are the T-side. They have complete control of Catwalk. They press forward. They're going to go for a B split as well, and that's a nice start catching the player Ben. BGT dispatched. The second crossing and trying to fill the gap as Maxi's caught. Barton finds a third. Make that a fourth as well. Uden and Quasso Peak taken down. Destiny caps off the round in a clean fashion with the fifth and final. No T-side players going down. No bomb plant either, but regardless, they have a very solid bonus going up against 9Z's rifle investment in round number 15. Yeah, those Galils are essentially M4s, and there are two players on 9Z without a helmet. No brain bucket. There is only one kit on the CT side as well. Wasso Peak on the MP9 will hold on to the diffuser. Not exactly the gun you want to have on the kit either, because it tends to be more aggressive... Firearm Destiny has Venom Zero there for the second play as well. That is a very good one to Wombo combo for Red Canids. Two man advantage as TGE holds desperately from jungle as the flames rain in around him. Fire and brimstone from heaven, flash bings blinding anyone out towards CT spawn. Four flashes use that direction of Barton with almost the best plant on Mirage A side, that little top triple plant. Save call already initiated for 9Z, and look at Red Canid's response. Hunt is on. Green light. Go, go, go. It's the bonus. There's no reason not to. They stand to gain so much more. If three rifles are saved by 9Z, they can scavenge their investment in the following. If only two survive, it's a very different situation. So even one successful kill on this hunt is massive. TGE can sitting in apartments. Finds one looking the wrong direction. It's hard, Zal. I'm taking away. It looks like Red Canids aren't going to force this necessarily. Buddha. A little bit audacious. Presses forward to grab an AK. In fact, he's actually fighting for more as well. Red Canids will give up the hunt. They'll give 9Z those three saved weapons that will allow 9Z to go for some sort of investment. Red Canids, this is where things become possible. Punish this. It'll be 7-9. Likely a save, 8-9 by extension. From there, it's basically a tied ball game. From there, they can actually realistically sweep this series. And that's where things get really off ugly for 9Z is they came into this as the favorites. Yes, Coach has to sub in for Try. They did have to sub in Huaso Peak as well, but I do have to think the loss of Try has really thrown things into a bit of a conundrum. But still, the lack of the IGL as well is going to hurt 9Z until they can get really solidified under new leadership. That is a nice little ding to the floor on the boot up. He does have health. TGE is here. And TGE will spray down Venom Zeta for the first. Takes a lot of damage, though. No return. But TGE doubles up. Massive work from the coach. But Nython strikes with that off. He knows the next guy is bench as well. Takes another rip. He cannot get the shot. 
Buddha. Captain DGT falls in the meantime. Hards out, gets another one. Wasso and Max, though. 2v1, Nython, 1v2 with the op. That was the bomb. Spots out one, takes a quick shot. Not really anywhere in the vicinity. They can double up on him. He's done. There's no way he wins this, surely. The USP is out. There's no way. And he does get mowed down by Wasso Peak. That might have been out of ammo on the op. The one shot did give him a very narrow window of opportunity. But again, it feels like the oppers are continuing to struggle in CS2. Python is no exception, unfortunately. He's still at the bottom for his team. And we saw a negligible impact as well on Anubis. Nuke can be an opera's playground. But I think the op has to play considerably more passive than it normally does on that map. Definitely. Python. Back on the big green. Max this time on the big green of the zone on the CT side. That is choice. I don't think they've spotted the cross. Destiny, though, continues the spray on the DGT, who will not survive that contact out middle. Opening pick and for free for Red Canids. Smoke goes deep top con, and Buddha's aggressing all the way through apartments. This could be dangerous if Barton's on the right angle for it. Sprays, bursts, nades should do it. Oh, wow. Buddha's lucky to get out of there alive. Six, four, one, Ooh. done. Takes a little more utility than expected, but hey, a second kill for free. Gladly trade those pieces of utility. He's there now, blocking at a ramp. Wins the spray to a sloppy one from Quasso Peak, and Destiny off the back of it finds one coming out of Palace. Oh, actually, using Connector, excuse me. Last alive is towards B. It's Max. He has an op. We talked about it being an unwieldy weapon. Bomb has been planted. At this point, he should try to probably save it for the following. 7 to 10. Terrorists. The op actually tried to be getting to save. Destiny on the hunt takes him down. A clean and flawless one for Red Canids on this T side. Builds up their economy very quickly. Whereas 9Z are going to have to go for a half buy, one hero rifle for Max. Or are they going to go for the investment? It looks like a half buy. DGT just dipping a little bit deeper into the coffers than normal. Eagle for Buddha. Also peak 5-7. TGE a P250. It should be another round for Red Canids, but 9Z have given themselves some tools to find the damage. Damage is good, but wins are better. Destiny up close could be vulnerable here. Good flash over top, and Max will pop one. Off from Nython, find zero. Zilch, not a DGT, comes through as well. Hards out only one. Barton 1v3. It will actually be a 1v4 to a 1v2. The bomb top middle, but Barton is creeping through underpass. Buddha expects this. Does Barton clear towards apps? Buddha's holding deep in kitchen. And Wasso Peak on the flank out top mid. It's a catch 22 from Barton. He could go get the bomb now. They know where he is. Does Wasso Peak join up with his teammate? Surely he makes his way in towards the TV room. Barton shut Ooh. down by Buddha. And the eco, the half by, goes the way of 9Z. That might be what gets them across the line. Very big kill from Buddha. His running steps were definitely heard. It was a calculated risk taking the fight against the Deagle, and I like the call, but the one dig does come through. Four round lead for 9Z. Rifles on the board. And Red Canids now. It's their turn to have a, a somewhat compromised by Barton, lacking a bit of utility. Venom Zero on a kill instead. 9Z finding some confidence. DGT just running it all the way up mid. Misses the spray, however, and gives a kill to Nython on a silver platter. Nython's rifle putting in some work. He'll go for more. Splashes rain in through middle. Max forced away to bottom comm, but he will re-peak. Looking for more information, more targets to hit. Three out mid, but the bomb retreats towards apps. Maybe even going in towards A. No. Apps is the play. Barton leading the charge. Strolling through into kitchen. Clearing it out. Smoke is there, but how much longer? 
Food the lone defender. TGE is somewhat close and with the utility running and surely TGE books it back to B. TGE, your teammate needs you. Buddha can get nothing on the site. Bomb will be planted four apartments where at least one player, looks like two, will wait in the halls. TGE and company going to save here as the CT economy still in shambles. Three rounds again separating these two teams. 9Z unable to get to map point. Red Canids hold on and stay alive. Red Canids, now their money's not great either. They really don't want to go for a hunt here. Although one kill would be massively influential in the next. Not going to get greedy though. And I can respect the call. All five saving towards T apartments. An eighth on the board again within three as you mentioned. Nine Z getting a little bit too aggressive in that round, giving away the opening towards the middle. DGT presses up, misses the spray, and there's three players waiting for him. Buddha on the B site, up close with an A1S. That's not the right M4 in that kind of situation. He falls without finding one. So Red Canids take a flawless victory, eight to eleven, looking to make it nine. And if they can make it nine, it should also be a tenth. This is a bit of a swing round. If Nine Z lose it. Red Canids with a huge opportunity to draw a nine level. They just tap the kids the line. And then avoid losing to the pistol half by, which is surely forthcoming. Because that also seems to be a bit of an issue. Nades out, flashes in. Run boost! Don't get to see those too often! And I'm happy to see the run boost being utilized. Destiny Smoke Spam works on a TGE. It's already an opening kill for Red Canids. The bomb working its way in towards B. Buddha. Gonna go behind that smoke as Destiny picks off DGT. Still out middle. Molotov might just flush out Max as well. It'll force him back and away towards A. Jungle now. As Nython works his way up. Catwalk. Only one defender of the B site. Buddha in hall. Will he be peaked by Nython? No, not yet. Max is here. Spots makes noise. Do they clear Buddha? Yes, they do. He cannot get anything. Max domed by Nython, who got a dink in return, Max. But Nython's AK wins out the day. Wasso Peak, save the M4, lad. You'd have no way back into a 1v5. Your exits mean nothing. Your M4 means everything. And he will peek in. Spots out the jumping peak. And now, Wasso Peak finds himself in a pincer move where he has essentially no way out. It's a smart walk there. Destiny will not hear it, but look where Venom's arrow is coming in, Khan. He's got the right read. Wasso Peak's just going to chill. He's going to die one way or another. They're going to find him. They're going to get him. And it's a flawless for not for Red Canids as 9Z dropped down again. No real money to even go for a half by a couple P250s, maybe a Deagle or a Tech 9. This one is getting down to the wire. Yes, it is. And see, I've had issues closing out games before, but this would be a heartbreaking one to lose. Keep in mind, it was a 9-3 half in their favor. And they are a CT-sided team as well. Red Canids changing up the pace immensely. Going straight towards A, lining up utility for a straight A play. A big departure from their slower defaults and probes towards middle. And it could very well catch out this compromised investment of 9Z. Smokes, though. Stifle the tank. Smokes stymie that push. But it won't deter Red Canids for long. They'll find somewhere else to move. Mid seems to be the play. No window peak. In fact, no mid presence whatsoever from the CT side. Max is the best they have, just a pensive hold, top con in towards Cat, and timing may not avail him. They walk in, they spot him. He knows now what's going on. The V player is on alert, Buddha tucked towards Van, TGE with the scout. He's trying to do something. Gets one, but traded back. Neither one two, actually. He eliminated Wasso Peak in the meantime. Buddha is the last one standing on the beast side, trying to do what he can, but Destiny's double this time. Going up with Nython will end things, essentially Barton with the final nail, but... The coffin was already much shut. One round separating these two teams. Buy up again, 4-9-Z. M4s, no AWP. And minimal utility will garner this side a very low chance of success. I know the HUD says good. 
Three mollies, five smokes, two flashbangs, and an HE is not good. No. Bare bones. And there's no kit. No kit is probably the most important piece of utility. Five smokes is nice. But especially in constructed play, it's required. Python, speaking of confidence, jumping up top mid box, looking for an opening. Smoke will come in towards the window. Max walled off. Back to the slower rounds for Red Canids. Getting control middle, holding the lanes towards A, holding underpass for a flank from B. Is a quad stack towards A for 9Z. This could work out. It looks like Red Canids are beginning to lean towards an A play. Look how little utility 9Z have, and now the A stack is being dismantled. They're going towards a more even play. Two and a half A, 2B. I say a half because TG is more focused. Connector wins that fight, though. That's a big start for 9Z. Out for Martin. He takes the firebox player. TG tagged low in, spammed down by Venom's arrow. Rotation's coming through. DGT unrevealed, still sitting in firebox. They have to go for something towards the side as the time ticks down to 30 seconds. Max gets caught by Venom Zeta, who's doing all the work, and now they know where DGT is, but it doesn't matter. He grabs two. DGT holding the line for 9Z. Hustle peak on the Venom Zeta. Buddha on the hard Zhao. Map point for 9Z. Better late than never, but they're not going to have an easy go at it. Red Canids have so much money left in the bank that even if they got zero money in the next round, still have enough to buy. Backs against the wall. They're going to go for it all. Op for Nython, 8Ks across the board. And the buy from 9Z is still a little bit hamstrung. Quasso peak on just the FAMAS. TGE, though, is the one to pick up the opping mantle this time around for 9Z. What is the call for Red Canids? It is a straight play towards A. All five players here. Lamp flashes through. They're not going to trifle with any respect. Just a straight play over towards A. Smoke out the ramp. Smoke towards jungle as well. Venom Zera opens it up on the max. Colossal Peak now a lot to do towards CT. Destiny finds Buddha. EGT and Khan surprises at least one. But now the jig is up. TGE and won't stop him. However, the op chimes in. Vamos tags and bags another Wasso Peak. Well done, Burton trades. But DGT maintains the advantage. Hard Zhao now. A one versus two. He's been quite in this map. But can he clutch it when his team needs him to the most? He's found the first. But he needs another. TGE swaps from the op to the AK. Still maintaining a healthy distance all the way at Catwalk. Hard Zhao is more than happy to wait out the time. He's got plenty of that to play with. The former Pain Gaming member makes his way out slowly and steadily onto the A site. No chances being taken by Hard Zhao. Only eight kills to his name right now, but he can definitely make it a big nine with a 1v1 duel taken against TGE. Coach versus standard rostered player. Nade and smoke for TGE. Hard Zhao comes down to the timing here. So many angles to check. He gets spotted crossing in. The nade will go through, do more damage. Actually, he kind of gets caught on the top of plywood. He swings out, and Hard Zhao wins the fight. Red Canids live to fight another day on Mirage. One more round, and the money for 9Z is rough. This buy is going to be harsh. M4s on a couple of players. Utility will be incredibly sparse. DGT on nothing but a Deagle. MP9 for Huaso Peak. No armor for DGT either. Zero kits, zero helmets. Not like it matters against the rifles. Only if the pistols do come out for Red Canids in a close range firefight. Mid is the fast play with a run boost. The rest of this team going towards apartments. Three stack towards B, including an apps boost. DGT and or TGE rather and Buddha going in. Barton hears the footsteps. He knows what's going on. Headshot not connected. Wild spray down, but hard sound trades it back. Double digits for him now and double man advantage. Not quite yet. They know where DGT 
he is on this night. Hearts out. Eats a little bit of each of the pieces. Look back in. He's just buying for rotations. The bomb is going elsewhere out towards middle. Max is here. So is Wasso Peak. Overtime looming. Hards out. Does not quite spot a backpack. And now he knows. Rounds out of ammunition, but he gets the fourth. On to the aces. Hards out. Spraying away with the Tech 9. We're headed to overtime. What an end. What an end. 9Z squandering their lead. Again, a team that is normally a very CT-sided squad caught out by Red Canids. We hit it directly into overtime. No time to recollect your thoughts. No time whatsoever, unless you want to call a tactical pause, which again, we have yet to see in this series from either team. 9Z not going to mess around with the... Oh, I was going to say, the zoomed weapon. We do have an AUG for Buddha. And Hard Zhao. A time to come alive for him. At 14 now. He had an ace and he had a 1 versus 2 clutch. And now 9Z are going to try to go back to what worked. The aggression towards middle. Does some damage. Does not get an opening. And Nithon is posted on the angle. It will watch the player cross. But DGT still, in spite of that, finds one. Venom Zera, a double in response. Sure, the bomb is down, but the advantage sits with Red Canids. Venom Zera underpass finds yet another. EGT on an island in the middle. Wasso Peak will find one. Sure, but he needs more than that. A second secure. DGT dropping Venom Zera. The round swings dangerously back in the favor of 9Z at a critical juncture as Nithon is the last remaining offensive player. The last alive on Red Canids with the unwieldy op to boot. Does have slight silver lining in Huaso Peak being at 18 HP. He also has made the right read and gone towards the empty site. But Nithon, he's had a quiet second map. He had a quiet first map too. He's had a quiet, quiet time on the op. That's the real story. His opping has not had much impact. Now, whether that's his fault or just not having many opportunities either, that remains to be seen. He goes to the sidearm, and that's going to work out so well against the 18 HP Huaso Peak. No, 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 yes! Knife kill! Bomb plant 1v1! Nithon can pull this off now. I was thinking he was going to go for an off no scope real quick there, and that's why I was saying no, 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 no. Just secure the kill. He goes for the overkill on the knife. And I do respect that a lot. Risky play, but I guess you got to risk it sometimes. Nithon looking the wrong direction, but it is planted for him and planted quite well. The nade's not going to do anything either from DGT. Molotov's available. Nithon hears it. Nithon's got the cross. Misses oh. the shot, though. Now things get ugly. Molotov will not stop the defuse. Nithon's got to go. DGT's holding. Nithon will not get the kill on time as it comes in far too late. Defuse works out well. Oh, that is, uh... An ugly did everything end. right until the missed shot. Holding too tight of an angle. That hits on CSGO, but it does not hit on CS2. You need yep. more notice. You need to see them crossing from a wider angle. And again, changes to weapons, biting players in the butt. And Kidin's now down by one and around. They honestly should have one. Nithon... Eager to avenge himself after that loss, finds one, secures the advantage, and Venom Zera spots two in the underpass. Park and Venom Zera both swing. Good spray from TGE, but only good for one. Venom Zera is the king of double kills in middle. He'll get both in response. Huaso Peak, Buddha, the last pair remaining for 9Z. One middle lurking up is Huaso Peak. One under balcony on A. This has the makings of a Red Canids round. Red Canids, one to deal with on A, one on the flank. Waso Peak has slipped the gap. They do not know he's here. Buddha. Shut oh! down. Nathan saw something, some sort of shadow or anything right up? there. I. I that's a nice head shot. Over the box. Yeah, something or other. Either way, good read. I like to think of it as a pure luck shot through the box because he's played there before, but. Mm. They have had shows. a player firebox, whether it's been Buddha, DGT. I think Max has even played there. That is good. That is a good point. Also, I would just like to assuage again some of the Nithon hate too, because Nithon was an incredibly capable opper on CSGO. Very good aggressive opper. 
that's kind of where he flies. It's almost like safe, but I would say a little less flashy, a little more stable in the way he played. It's going to take a bit for him to find that kind of form and consistency on CS2 if it's even possible. I was going to say, they got a late start in CS2 as well because they were mm -hmm. playing in CCT. That is true. CCT has moved over to CS2 at this point. but At this point, but their last tournament was on CSGO, if I'm not mistaken. Or actually, yes. excluding the open qualifier. But they had a later start than most, I would dare say. It took a little bit longer to build that fluency on the scoped weapon. 9Z, not dissuaded from their aggressive stances, will continue to pressure this time towards ramp, and they will get a lot of information from it. There's nobody lurking in that direction, so also Peak will be able to get a lot of control. 9Z. Two on B, one passive middle. Still two towards A. Meanwhile, Red Canids are getting control of the mid area. In the back. I don't think that was supposed to be that, Max. That was unfortunate. <laughs> he took half health on that need, too. That is really unlucky. Could say NA nade, but this is SA after all, so. SA nade? Time... Yeah, I was say, time for new names. It is Counter Strike yeah. 2. Well, I guess the thing is, you wouldn't get NA tossing the nade in the first place, so. You have to throw the nade to be able to hurt yourself with it. One and maybe a half for Destiny, not quite more. Just the end of the game. Is on Hard Zhao, drops in, Buda is dropped down. Max hard cleared oh. by Hard Zhao. And Hwaso Peak and TGE will attempt something. TGE does pick off Destiny with the AWP. Hwaso Peak again on a flank. This guy has just slipped in the back line so many times in this map, and it really hasn't equated to much at all. TGE almost hits the cat jump, but does not quite do it. Hwaso Peak, right idea. Not quite fast enough. TGE is going to fall down at some point here. Hopper's duel. Clear it. Tech 9 in hand. Will seal his fate. Red Canids nab the advantage going into the second half. For those of you wondering how this works, it's three round halves in overtime with 12.5k in the bank to start. The magic number is 16. So if Red Canids win two of these next three rounds, they will win this map and by extension the series. If 9Z sweep all three of these rounds, they send us over to Nuke. And if Red Canids win one and 9Z two, then we go to yet another bout of overtime. Hey, we're getting to an MR MR15 scoreline though, Nate. We might have a Counter-Strike scoreline. A Counter-Strike Global Offensive scoreline at any rate. I know CPL back in the day was MR12 like it is now, but... We got so used to MR15, where it was 16 to win and 19 in OT1. Double ops for Nar for Nithon and Barton. This is something I've not seen yet in CS2. And Hwaso Peak shows us kind of why. Flash bang in, wide swing out, headshot delivered. CS2 living up to its name of too good to use the op. Barton's going to die. Swing and he misses the shot, but he does get the survive. Important caveat. Still an advantage for 9Z, however. Rickon is about nothing. Max is heard in towards Palace. But he's the only one around towards A. Instead, it's going to be a B play from 9Z as they begin to group in the apartments. Only one to hold is Hard Zhao, but he's been very good, especially in the latter stages of this map. Solid individual player. Art takes a little bit of damage. It's just a lurk out A. Destiny does fall, though. Then he's at a one, and the second as well. Doesn't take much from Max at all. Hard Zhao is here in the push, though. He just needs two. He gets one, and a spray away. Cannot get the second kill, but the rotations are going to flood on through. Barton and Venom Zeta. Barton's still on the AWP. An interesting choice to go for that double off, and we'll see if it makes any headway here. Another Molotov. In Barton sees Buddha crossing, but again, the op holding the pixel angles in CS2 just really doesn't seem to work that well. It does feel like there's a bit of a lag when you take the shot half the time, and I feel like Red Canids are definitely experiencing the full extent of that. Venom's head of falls. Barton 1v2 with the AWP. This is almost unwinnable here for him. He'll peek out. Does spot the leg, I believe, of Buddha out towards Evox, but 
Martin's gonna have to back away. Shut down by Huaso Peak. And we see ourselves tied at 14. Yes, we do. If one team sweeps the last two rounds, it'll be curtains on Mirage. If they split these rounds, it's continuing on. Ithon still has the op. No double op in effect, however. And 9Z not trifling with the big green. Straight AKs on the offensive. Utility for an A play. That's the spot from Palace. DGT takes half damage. He does that kill. Venom's head on the site. Comes up empty handed. The off of Nython. Throws down one, but he cannot get half out of there before DGT finds the frag. 4v2, 9z. Looking like they are going to get two in a row here. DGE gets the bomb down just narrowly. Hards out a little bit late on the peak. The outside default plant saving the life of TGE. Can't facilitate the bomb plant. They do know one is towards Firebox. The nade should go deep enough. And DGT is a dead man here as the Molotov lands in. Roast. How does he get out of there alive? Oh, nobody was holding. That's why. I'm taking away over halfway gone at this stage. And he's still kicking. DGT finds the kill despite the low HP. Barton should have no chance in this round. He's going to try to perhaps save his gun for the following. The economy is not the best for the CT side at this stage. I'm trying to hunt him down. TGT crab walking through the exit. He said he was dead to rights, and yet he's the one to put the final two into the ground. 9Z. They have redeemed themselves. They've earned one more map point. The question is, can they actually get it across the line? That's a very good question. OT2 is 15 all. Game over, 16-14. Op, Famas, M4s, one kit, minimal utility considering the fact that it is OT. And you do start with 2,500, or 1,250, sorry. The double op coming back to bite Red Canids, that was a very interesting call. And I think they still realize that. Max is lucky to get out of here undamaged after that wide swing out into the open. No refrag, no damage taken really by anybody. The six and nine damage taken, not really much. There's an op shot from Nithon and Destiny swings for Max. Now Red Canid's getting something going. Destiny has to be aware of Khan though. Nobody's watching Khan. Nobody's watching for this as Waso Peak runs on in. He's blocking, he's jumping, he's having a party with Hardzow. The smoke fade will favor him. He slips on by one and two on the Destiny. That is going to give some sort of life. 9Z until Nithon and Venom's head up. Suck him right back out. Also, Peak tagged down low. Does he get anything more? Oh. Does finish off Nithon. This is when it will be an ace clutch for Rosso Peak. Barton does not need to make a move, though. He has to know this. Barton just has to hold the line. Also, Peak is hoping the CT pushes in. But Barton, he may be young, but he's been around the block. And he goes back to be the experience showing for young Barton. He knows what's at hand, the possibilities at stake. And Wasso Peak is a one-shot. Is there any utility for Barton to salvage an HE, a Molotov, a Flash, something? I don't think so. Exposed Peak. Or exposed Plant, excuse me. It's a free kill for Barton. Bomb Plant is down, but it does not matter. Economy is going to be reset. Barton wins the round. Wasso Peak. A valiant attempt in the clutch. He got it to the one versus one. It would have been an ace clutch as well to get his team to map number three. But Barton bails out Red Canids. They stay alive in map number two. And we start the whole process of new bugs. It's going to be another three round half. This time with the Red Canids staying on the CT side. And the magic number now swaps from 16 to 19. Now we're in old-fashioned CSGO score lines. We're at what would be considered OT1 from CSGO. First to 19. They did a double off again. They can sell. They can sell. Hopefully. Are they trying to give me an aneurysm? Yes. Jeez Louise. Leg shot, okay, that's the best success the double op setup has had for Red Canids. He 
Is it really worth it? Maybe. There's one. You got a leg and one. Z scrambling into a quick B play, perhaps? No, they're gonna fake it instead. Shadow who's leg towards the middle. Yeah. Let's be very careful. Hwaso Peak. GT is sticking around towards B, perhaps a split on the cards. Taking towards middle, flash in, but he does not win the duel. TGE is tagged down, however. Still a firm advantage for Red Canids. DGT towards Van. Catches hard down with smoke blooms, and he spots a second. Desperate duel for Barton. He does survive, but now he's stuck between a rock and a hard place. Other players now coming in. Ninth on one, Barton a second. Finally unseating the Van player. TGE and Hwaso Peak both lit. The op is overkill. Finds one, Ninth on a second? No. Also peak, another attempt at the low HP clutch. It'd be a one versus three, 4K. If he could find it, a second security reads the play expertly. The last alive items there was spotted towards market. Wasso peak goes for said peak and finds it. A one versus three, 4K to snag the round for 9Z. Wasso peak finally puts on the mantle of hero instead of just coming up short. That is a good T round to win for 9Z. It gives them something to build on, something to work with. They need at least two, though, I would say, given how strong that both teams have played on their T sides, respectively. The off is out for Nyth on a Nyth on only. Double off setup. Should never see the last day again. Max is lucky to get out of there alive. I thought Destiny was going to be out there. He would have had the free kill on Max for running it down middle. Martin, he's up on the balcony. The nade will do all three damage. And actually, Nibble booted to get the pick as it dissipates that smoke. Hard's out rotating in. He needs to get at least one here, but two would be ideal. Zero is not. Nizon makes his way on through. Molotov's in the back. He's not going to watch the player running around that side. Why would he? The Molotov's there. But Buddha finishes him off. Wasso pick on the destiny. Set him dead on the last alive. In towards CT. One minimal kill. Terrorists win. Only one. Double start on the T side. 4-9-Z again. And because of the double op, Red Canids are going to be under the gun here. Yes, they are. An 18-15 T-side half does feel like a setup for success. 9Z, a distinct possibility to sweep this first half. And Red Canids on a compromised investment. They are bringing out the double up again. You hate to see it, Boggs, but it could work out. Knife on Glass no. Cannon, Hard Zell lacking utility. In fact, the whole team lacking utility. But Moss for Destiny, to say this rinks of desperation might be an understatement. Nate, um... No, uh, no. The, the double op setup should not be contemplated here. This is Einstein's definition of insanity taken to its extreme. The definition of insanity being doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Far Cry 3. It's hard enough to get one kill with the op, with one op. Two is not going to make it better. It only multiplies the struggle. You want to say it as well? We are in double overtime at this stage, and we have yet to see a pause. Yeah, I don't think either of these teams are going to use a timeout. Aside from a technical issue, I don't think they're we're going to see a pause here. No. GT and a smoke towards ramp could find Venom Zera. I thought as well as in a very compromised spot with the op default. Oh. Very easily overwhelmed. The Buddha though, lurking towards B is caught without incident. No second player swing should tell Red Canids it's going to be an A play. Pop on the smoke. Venom Zera caught through it. Max as well drops knife on. That's the A site taken. Max holding jungle. Destiny towards CT spawns. Going to have to do a lot with this from Moss. I'd say a minimum of two if Red Canids want a shot in this one. He's got Barton there with him, but the op is not going to be able to do much and has to do so much. DGT domes Destiny. The spray down onto Barton. Leaving hard Zhao in the 1v4 to a 1v3. Half HP and nowhere to be. Time is ticking. He's gone down. 1815. Flawless T side for 9Z. Red Canids. 
They try to throw ops at the problem. Just ends up piling stones upon their own grave. One is all 9Z need, and they have three rounds to get it done. Three chances, three opportunities. And we do see an op for both teams. Nithon expected. Buddha, less so. But hey, upgrading the AUG to an op. See what he can do. Need to lean in effect for Red Canids. Masquerade the offensive. Spam comes through from Destiny, clearing out the close angles. Smart call. Decent utility damage from Max in response with the nade, but the control has been ascertained at this stage. 15 or thereabouts left in the round. No casualties on either side of the equation. And Puda is the lone B defender. He's on an island with the op. He needs to be careful. Destiny finally connects a spam through the smoke. It's on to Max. That is an opening secured for Red Canids. Nade for the smoke. Venom Zero. It's not spot TGE. And Destiny walk through it. TGE. No play shot to find the trade. Four versus four. Still in favor of the T's, but with DGT and TGE combining fire. Things that swing in the way of 9Z. Two remaining for Red Canids. Hard Zhao, the first secured, but still many more required. Wasso Peak out triple. Totally unexpected. Finds the first. Martin, the last alive. Now one versus three to keep the team alive. He'll find the first for the triple, but two more at two very different angles. The up towards market still unknown. And DGT bottom con spamming away. 25 seconds left. Martin does have the bomb. He has to cross a long distance to get the plant. He will make the cross, and there is nobody CT. Barton can try to the stick. He sees the peak from PGT. Buddha is still there with an op. 14 seconds. Time is ticking. Barton tucks in the default, and we'll get that bomb down. PGT running in. The op shows, and Barton now knows where both of them are. Barton has to get the headshot angle. 11 rounds. 10, 9, Ooh. dead to rights. And 9Z will finally get this one over the line. You do have to wonder, though, how much did that double up cost Red Canid? So many times in overtime. Double up, double up, double up. It did not work. It weakened their defense. And they fall down in the end on Mirage after clawing all the way back from down 9-3. to three. So close and yet so far.